the Sky Dome, now known as Rogers Center, was a revolutionary idea for the time, presented as the first MLB retractable roof ballpark, breaking ground in 1986, opening in 1989 as the Sky Dome. It was a multi-purpose stadium that hosted the Blue Jays along with the Toronto Canadian football team. It also hosted the Buffalo Bills one game per year from 2008 to 2013. And by the way, those games did not do well in Toronto. They couldn't even sell the Rogers Center out for them. None of those games were played outdoors. They all had the dome closed over top. But we're going to go back to the beginning when it was originally called the Sky Dome. Take a look at its inception. The idea for building a dome stadium can be traced back to the bid that Toronto lost to Montreal as the Canadian candidate for the city of the 1976 Summer Olympics. And we remember the Summer Olympics brought in Montreal, the massive $1.1 billion stadium, Olympic Stadium, which is still alive and kicking today, although it is completely decrepit. You can see some different designs for a potential dome stadium. They took over 200 different design ideas from people. They had a contest and these are just some different ones in comparison to what the Rogers Center ended up being. They all look relatively similar, and Toronto wanted to do something big. They wanted to do something impressive, hence the idea of the retractable roof. And when you look at the Rogers Center retractable roof today, it does look very simplistic. It looks very concrete. They did that on purpose because they were really the first ones to install something this massive, this scale, that actually opened and closed. And it's a weird retractable roof because it actually over overhangs over the center field so what you'll get like a one o'clock game in the afternoon where there'll be a shadow in center field just because of the way the retractable roof hangs out normally with retractable roofs they'll either be you know out beyond right field out beyond left field it's kind of a weird cork and I do think it was because nobody really knew how to design a retractable roof this was all a brand new thing to Toronto the original stadium did cost $570 $570 million, that was all the way back in the 1980s. It would be possibly up upon like a billion dollars at this point. When it came to the retractable roof, it was important that the design would work and be reliable as to avoid the various problems that plagued Montreal's Olympic Stadium. Now, Olympic Stadium technically kind of had a retractable roof. The issue with Olympic Stadium, even when the roof is up, It seems like it's indoors just because there's such a giant overhang, you you know, and and that didn't, I mean, it didn't even work after five years because of the cable issues and things like that. So they saw the Olympic stadium model and how bad it was, and they wanted a fully actual retractable roof that was able to open. And when you see the Rogers Center open, it does look very sunny. It looks very vibrant. It's basically fully open. They're able to hide the retractable roof a lot better. Olympic stadium It wasn't even really a retractable roof. It was like a cable system with a tarp. It was very strange. So it's a completely different, fully concrete design. And also, I would be remiss if I didn't say the over 300-room hotel at the Rogers Center. A lot of those rooms do have a view of the field. That is now a Marriott Hotel. It's changed names a few different times, but it is very, very nice. And I will say, one of the things I would love to see the Rogers Center do in the future is redesign the exterior hotel you know, paneling and just make it a little bit better. Maybe make it darker. To me, the white paneling kind of looks bad. It looks a little bit tacky. Also, maybe redesign the windows, but that is certainly a really cool thing within the Rogers Center, and you can really do that because of the way the Rogers Center is built up. The entire stadium is fully closed, and that kind of gives you the the idea of being able to build up beyond center field and actually install a literal hotel with rooms that can see the field. They also had an enclosed restaurant out in center field. They renovated that before this newer renovation that they got. I'll be honest, looking at that center field restaurant with the windows, it looks like a greenhouse to me. And they did a good job. They basically just completely eliminated those windows, opened up a two-deck party deck, and now it looks very nice and it's like standing room areas out beyond center field. 
the Sky Dome became the Rogers Center in 2005 after Rogers Communications, the parent company of the Blue Jays, acquired the Sky Dome, excluding the attached Sky Dome Hotel, which is completely different. Rogers Center has also seen smaller renovations that you might not know about, including nice exterior lighting above the roof. Also, the clubhouses have been renovated to make way for larger training rooms. The main level concourse has expanded making the space brighter and far more fan-friendly. And then, of course, the huge renovation, which cut the capacity down to 41,000. Rogers Center was never your typical multi-purpose. Like, it was multi-purpose, and that was kind of the issue in terms of the seating out in the outfield. Like, if before the renovation, if you looked at the outfield wall compared to the first, you know, row of, like, stands, it wasn't connected. And that was because of the fact that it was a multi-purpose. But it wasn't this crazy multi-purpose stadium. When I was younger, I never really thought of the Rogers Center as multi-purpose because even for Canadian football, their capacity was really only expandable to 52,000. And for baseball, it used to be at around 49 to 50K. It, they've cut it down to 41 and a half K because they eliminated a bunch of seats in the upper deck. They still do kind of have a big wraparound upper deck, but the seats that they eliminated were right above and below the hotel out in left center and right center field, and they replaced those both with standing room party deck areas. We've seen a similar design with Progressive Field and the Cleveland Guardians along with the Colorado Rockies and their party deck out in right field with Coors Field where they eliminate outfield seating, upper deck seating to be exact, and they replace it. And then the other thing that they did is they custom fit the bullpens with the walls to make it a fully baseball stadium. I do, yeah, there's no way Rogers Center at this point can ever host a football game again because of them custom fitting that. You're not able to move those seats or the walls at all. They're in place at this point and they're fully going all in on baseball. And I've wondered, you know, when will Toronto get the All-Star game, especially with this renovation? And now they're kind of doing a smaller renovation this offseason where they're changing the entire seating in the lower bowl behind home plate. And they're putting in some exclusive club levels and, and they're kind of removing some of the seats, things like that. You do got to wonder, maybe 2027, 2028, Rogers Center will be hosting an all-star game. I would say this renovation has expanded its life by probably 20 years. There was significant talk of possibly building a brand new MLB stadium in and around Toronto to replace the Rogers Center because at the time, I mean, you go back to like 2012, 2013, even 2016, 2017, people hated the Rogers Center. They would routinely rank it as one of the five or six worst ballparks. You know, I never did that. I do think there were some bad things about it. The fact that it was not custom fit for baseball, the capacity was a bit too high, it was fully closed. But I think... You know, obviously being a fully closed stadium is bad, but if you're going to have a hotel in center field, that kind of makes up for it. Now, the exterior of it, you know, the exterior of it reminds me of the United Center. It just looks like a giant concrete, you know, dome that's been just molded together. It's just a massive concrete thing, you know. It is what it is. It was built in the late 80s. It's not going to have the amazing exterior that we're used to today with some of these stadiums. But either way, I would say at this point, the Rogers Center, a little bit underrated. And there is the idea, because they made the roof so simplistic, that maybe they could try and renovate it and let in natural light. There's been some different renderings on that. Those, the, That idea, those talks have really gone nowhere so I would not expect something like that to happen, but there is the idea maybe down the line, although this does seem like the final big Rogers Center renovation. They're investing money into it. It's going to last another good 20 years, and then Toronto very likely will move on because at this point, you would have to keep renovating different stuff, especially the entire exterior, and there's just no point in doing that. So the Rogers Center for now is fine. I think it's a solid mid-tier stadium in MLB. There's pros and cons. It is very unique with the hotel out in center field. Also, you have the blue seats. That's another nice incorporation. They made the seats darker, by the way, 
on the renovation. They changed out all of the seats and made them darker, and that was a good idea. The bright sky blue seats are really gimmicky. Seems like you're at like a Boise State football game. It's just not a good color, so them changing the seats to darker was a very solid move, and it presents the stadium a lot better more as a professional type thing. Also, the Rogers Center was known as a heavy offensive park. You know, the Rogers Center... I mean, whatever AstroTurf they had, it was them in Tropicana Field, but honestly, they were first. It was like you were at a tennis court with how bouncy the ball was. It was crazy, and to me, that made it more of an offensive park. Now, it still technically is a really good offensive park, but I just feel like it lost its luster when they took out the the AstroTurf and and all the bounciness of it, and and now, obviously, every MLB stadium, you're not going to find AstroTurf. No player is going to play on that, but either way, guys, that is just the story of the Rogers Center. It was very impressive. It was a retractable roof and kind of the first main retractable roof, you could argue, that Olympic Stadium, but I don't really view whatever that concoction is, kind of like alien concoction, as a retractable roof. This was the first main one that actually motorized and moved and and was a concrete shell over a stadium. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.